very good morning to everyone as part of our python learning journey we are moving towards our next milestone uh, we are going to uh, exchange messages packet be between python software nodes right so so we want to exchange information between two software nodes right for that, um, we need a CAN hardware right now. See, when we want to exchange CAN packets between two ECUs, we should we should have a CAN hardware we, uh, through which only we can exchange packets, right? That is in real time. When it comes to software, we need some sort of mechanism which facilitate that exchange not 100 percent equivalent to real time but somewhat whatever the feature that we have in the uh, can hardware no that should be available only then we can mimic the real time environment in our desk right that is what that is what the thing see in can hardware i believe those who attended my um, can training right that is uh, um, the training about uh, software system testing, those candidates know about it. They, when we want to do any network analysis, we need some sort of network analysis tool, right? That tool requires a CAN hardware, right? Through which only it used to exchange the CAN packet from the PC to the external ECU, right? When it is Transmitting packets from the PC, or from packet from the simulation, it used to queue them in the hardware. That packets will be queued um, in the CAN hardware because uh, every CAN hardware used to have, every CAN hardware as well as every CAN ECU used to have transmit queue and receive queue, right? The transmit queue used to, uh, will have the packet to be transmitted and the receive queue will have the packet received from the outside world, digitized packets, right? That is how we used to have. So that uh, only then we can, then the arranged packet, that means queued packet will be transmitted one by one via CAN hardware. That is how the things works, right? But when we want to do such an exchange in the simulation, we need a queue structure. We have to arrange our packets in queue in every software node and then how to exchange them with the uh, other nodes, right? Do we have, can we make such a provision in Python? Can we make queues in Python? Yes, we can do so. It is not a rocket science. Um, we can create queues in Python. It is a little bit time consuming and uh, it involves a lot of programming. Right, only then we can achieve that. But there are certain ready-made packages or ready-made software or uh, which are those are free available in the market. We can simply use them in the initial phase. Our goal is we need to have everything in Python. Maybe we will achieve that one day. But at present, we have some ready-made work which is available at free of cost. We are going to use them for our CAN packet exchange between Python nodes because each node going to be a Python program, right? These Python programs want to exchange packet in between them. That should be a reliable communication. There should not be any a missing of packets those should not happen, right? For that, there is a open source software available called RabbitMQ, right? Using that, we can define queues and then we can uh, exchange the information that we want to exchange with other nodes in those queues. Then the other node can pick the, the messages from the queue and use it. So it's just something similar to producer-consumer problem. Node which is generating 
packets is a producer and one who consumes is a receiver. In between them, we are going to place a rabbit MQ intermediator, which is going to define and manage queues. So using that, we can define queues and we can manage it. Right. So this is just like another, uh, this minimize. Why I have to go for rabbit MQ? Why don't I do it by defining the queue by myself, by myself? And uh, do, yes, that is possible to do so in even in Python, but it needs a lot of programming. At this stage, earlier, we are in a very beginning stage uh, right now. And so for in this moment, it is not the right option to go and uh, spending our time with uh, uh, programming a queue. That's why we use this RabbitMQ software, right? It is free. I will explain you how to download it and install all those stuff. In order to mimic, can transmit and receive queue, we are going to use RabbitMQ. That is what the thing. So now we are uh, somehow we are moving towards somehow the realistic packet extension. In the previous session, I just printed the package periodically, a CAN packet periodically. Now our goal is transmit that packet um, somehow using one program to another program via RabbitMQ. That is how, that is the goal, right. Here is a diagram how the packets going to be exchanged. So we are going to uh, get packets from the nodes that want to transmit in the RabbitMQ queue. And then from there, uh, that will be fetched by other um, nodes. That means other Python programs that we have in our simulation. Right. That's how it is. How to download RabbitMQ? In order to install RabbitMQ, you need your language. Is in another language that is also a free, so you can download that from this website. You have to install Erlang first before you install RabbitMQ. So it is a dependence. It is a dependence of RabbitMQ that you should have Erlang first in your in your PC right now. Uh, let me explain you how to download Erlang in my laptop. For that, go to this website. Maybe I think we can. See here, this is the official Erlang website. Here we can download Windows installer, right? Maybe in my PC is 64 bit. If yours is 32, you can download 32. From my view, I already, I have downloaded uh, Erlang before. That is there in my download folder. So let me install that from my download folder. Okay, we have installed. Erlang now. So after installing Erlang, we have to install RabbitMQ. To download RabbitMQ, you go here. Like this is the website to download RabbitMQ. So this is the official style to download RabbitMQ. Here you just download Windows installer. Like when you download this, when you hit this, you will download Windows in installer. Once you download it, I have already downloaded that. You will get a package like this to install RabbitMQ. After you download RabbitMQ package, you just uh, run this as an administrator. So it will ask something and it will show the default installation folder. Okay, team. Now to check the Rabbit MQ server is running, go for services.
and uh, search for RabbitMQ. So it is running. Okay. With the default configuration, it is running. We have to configure this RabbitMQ. In order to configure RabbitMQ, we have to... One sec. We have to type a command in command line. So just me open my... Right. So so this is the command that we have to run it in command prompt. For that, let me go to command prompt. Rabbit MQ command prompt. Right. Just I say yes. Here it is. So now I am going to run this command rabbit mq plugins dot bat list. This will list out all the plugins that is available. So they are they are they put that e star, which means that it is not enabled or not enabled, not yet confirmed. So to enable them, we just uh, Use another command rabbit mq plugins dot bat enable rabbit mq management. So this will help us to enable. Okay, so okay, let me check that now. Okay, they are still A star, probably they are enabled, I believe. Let us check that in the browser. Okay, here you see gust and uh, username as gust and uh, this is, uh, password as gust. Okay, if you do so, you will get a dashboard which to manage your rabbit MQ connection and traffic right. and other stuff. You can see them here. Okay, as of now, let us, um, now the rabbit MQ is ready. Now the next step is we have to connect with rabbit MQ to exchange a message. We already have a Python program with us. We are going to use the same to interact with, we are going to modify the existing a program that we have for periodic transmission of message in order to transmit our uh, can package to another node right for that let me bring the let us let me go to the folder okay now we are in the folder here here we have a uh, our MSG trans dot five, which is you which is having a periodic message transmission code. Now we are going to modify that again. So for that node pad plus plus, then MSG trans dot five. Here is the code here to establish. The connection with connection with our uh, rabbit MQ. This is a sample code. This code is provided by the the people who developed rabbit MQ. Right? They have given a sample code. Here I say connection equal to Pika. For that you have to download and install Pika. So to installing Pika, we have a command here python hyphen m pip install pika so when you install like that you will get pika once you have pika in your python installation then we can say 
connection equal to pika dot blocking connection then pika connection parameters our host is local host this means our server is local host and then the channel the channel we have to get it right now so uh, after doing it channel dot q declare then i am defining a q as bcm q that means this q going to have bcm related messages like that i am declaring after that otherwise the q of bcm node that is transmit q of bcm node then the result equivalent to json dot dump bcm info why i am doing it i am i convert my dictionary actually this is a dictionary only you know bcm info is a can packet which he, as far as the uh, python is concerned it is a dictionary we have to transmit the dictionary via rabbit mq channel right now we are going to do a packet transmission to do that we convert that into string using this one json dot dump for that you have to import json uh, that is an another library file once you have done that you will get a string of result that we can publish we can transmit that to uh, basic dot publish this is going to be we are going to publish the the can packet to everyone in the network right so exchange routing key is bcmq and body equal to result that means body going to be our can packet right then we have after doing after publishing it we are closing the connection we are also printing the bcm info as of now i am going to uh, comment this because i just I, do, I just want to transmit that that all that's all so this is going to happen every time periodically every 250 millisecond this transmission going to happen let us see whether that is working for that python Python our msd trans dot py. So it says like msd trans. Okay, sorry. So they say something like BCM info is not defined. Did you mean BCM info? I think I am doing a, some typo error here. BCM underscore info, I believe so. Yes. Then after fixing that bug, hmm, the position argument FP. See, uh, we had an issue with that BCM uh, the json dot dump function we have used only json dot dump no actually it should be it should be called along or it should be uh, called with yes only then um, it will accept uh, the string uh, yeah, it will accept a single entity and then we'll convert that into string so what i did i called json dot jump dumps now and then my dictionary which is nothing but my can packet i convert that into string after converting that into string, I publish that string using basic publish function. So here routing key is bcmq and then the body is the result, which is nothing but the can packet. So after transmitting it, I close the connection. So this, uh, the, the function that we have now, no, this will be repeated again and again and again every 250 milliseconds. So now we are going to transmit a packet in software from one one uh, to mimic the real time real time um, scenario we are going to transmit a packet from one software module to another software module uh, for that we are using rabbit mq right now to receive the packet transmitted from this module i have an another ready made code sample provided by um, the RabbitMQ uh, development team. So here we have a sample code. This sample code, again going to ex ex establish a connection with the server, that is the RabbitMQ server. From there, it is going to access the BCMQ. From the BCMQ, it simply takes the packets. When there is a packet in the BCMQ, this uh, 
basic uh, that is callback function will be called on message in the BCM queue when there is a message received from the from any module to the BCM queue you call this function which is callback this callback going to print the received uh, body of the packet which is nothing but our can message so we are going to transmit the can can packet from one python module and we are going to receive it in an another python module to exchange the packets between this module rabbitmq is going to act like a, a queuing server otherwise uh, it, it is going to me act like an intermediator right now let me run on the um here we have a command prompt again we do have an another chrome command prompt here so let me clear them both right so initially i'm i want to start my receive.py which is going to auditor the packets in the the particular queue right bcm queue right so for that python receive dot point so i think it is started it, it it took some of the packets those were in the bcm queue and it is listed after that it is waiting right so now i am going to run but it is not showing any more packet that means it is not displaying the packet received now because the queue is empty so now let me transmit the packets from message trans module by running it so now it is transmitting when it is transmitting we get that packet here that is transmitted packet is received by uh, receive.py and it is displaying right so that's all now we are able to exchange the packets in between modules which is nothing but packet in between two software nodes right so similar way again this module can transmit the packet that can be received by this msg trans module uh, actually this msg trans module that we have now this is going to be a bcm module software bcm module in our projects because it is transmitting the vehicle speed we will implement the other modules one by one in python and we'll exchange the packet between them all right so in order to achieve this this rabbit mq queuing server is uh, helping us to achieve what we want okay no? okay team i want to stop today's session with this let me catch you with more details in upcoming session thank you thank you for watching